welcome to Peace Vision. We are a portal for positive change. And part of that positive change has to do with not religion, but spirituality, right, David? Yeah. And yeah. kind of a big difference between the two, don't you think? There really is. You know, with spirituality, we look at nature as part of, like you could say, a higher power. We look at the beauty of, of, of flowers and animals. And spirituality goes all over the place. With spirituality, if you want to have a bunch of really rigid rules, you can or you can flow. With spirituality, you might take a little bit of various religions that really touch your heart and soul and make them all part of your spiritual practice. Now, on the other side, religion, and as a minister, I can tell you there's nothing wrong with the right religion for you. It's usually more structured, and it's more like Sunday at 9, you be here, and Wednesday at 8, you be here. With spirituality, wherever you are, you're in the grace. If you're in a parking lot, you're in grace. If you're in a meeting, you're in grace. Spirituality is 24-7, 365. And that might be a little bit different than a lot of how people look at the religious life. Again, no judgment of what's right or what's wrong. What feels best to you? But I have a question for you. Yeah. Knowing the two, how is it, you know, on Sundays if you're religious and you go to a, a, a church service every 9 a.m., when you're spiritual, it's 24-7 every day, but nothing's all the time, right? Because right. our minds travel this there. How do we develop um, an, a, a ritual, I guess, mm -hmm. to stay connected with that spirituality so that it doesn't just happen every now and then? Whereas with religion, that's why they tell you, see you here next week. Yeah, right, right. exactly. So Thich Nhat Hanh, a famous Buddhist monk, said a long time ago, when you wash the dishes, do it in the spirit when you wash the floor, do it in the spirit. In other words, he was saying every action that you make should be based on spirituality. Like you're so connected. Another word that Eckhart Tolle has brought into vogue years ago is mindfulness. Thich Nhat Hanh said when you're mindful of washing the dishes and you feel the soapy water, you're in a spiritual experience because you're grounded and present. So as John was saying, rituals are everything. Regardless if you're spiritual, highly religious, it doesn't matter what religion you come from, the combination and the similarities are in the daily rituals. So we can talk right now about those rituals. John, one I know that you love is the ritual of prayer. Yeah, well, it's a place where I go and, and have gone, in, a lot of times, to be quite honest, in times of need, yeah. you know, God, please help David get through this accident. Yeah. You know, those kind of prayers. Yeah. But it's prayers of gratitude are also very powerful really as well. Really powerful. Yeah. Most really strong religious teachers and spiritual teachers will tell us that prayer should be ongoing. You know, John mentioned something that a lot of us do. We have a tendency to get caught up in the rat race. We don't really pay attention to the power of prayer until we're in need. You know, uh, Reverend Matthew Fox, an acquaintance of mine who has written 40 books, and he's just incredible, he wrote a book on Meister Eckhart who said, the only prayer you ever need in the world to say every morning, noon, and night is thank you, God. The power of that means when things aren't going well, you're saying, thank you, God, because there's a lesson here. And I'm getting chills right now, John. You know, we're saying thank you. It's a challenge, but thank you. All of the monks that I've interviewed over the years, Lama Surya Das, they all say the same thing. People think the monastic life is easy. And Lama Surya Das says it's one of the most difficult things to do because you're in the presence 24 seven and you have to remind yourself that you're in the presence 24 seven. A lot of your rights are taken away when you're in mon the monastic life. You know, you just don't go out and spend money because you don't have money. So everything becomes internal. John, if we can take those type of teachings and we can look at every moment of every day to say thank you, even for those things that aren't comfortable, we start to open ourselves up to what I call grace. When you're thanking God for the challenge and also asking him, what's the message here? How do I have to change? What do I need to let go of? Now you're in communion with your higher power. You're in communion with God. You have a relationship with God, which so few people have these days. One of my earliest teachers, and I posted this on social media the other day, 1980, I cannot remember which monk it was, told me this. If you would slow down and look at God as a friend and talk to him 
as I talked to John and back, he said that conversation, David, should be going on every morning. Like, hey, good morning, God. What is it that you want me to do today? How is it that I can serve you most? Can you introduce me to someone that might need my help, my smile, not my advice? Can you, inv you know, invite me to meet someone that needs a hug or needs someone just to sit and listen? And by the way, there's a few things I need for you to do for me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, God, you know, I'm not altruistic here. You know, I need a bunch of cash. So we're talking about 10 grand and 30 I just days. have a few things for you. <laughs> but, but no, yeah. I love your humor, John, yeah. you know, and, 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 and humor is an important part of the spiritual life. It should be an important part of the religious life as well. We shouldn't have to take everything so seriously. But if we can start to thank God for the traffic jam, what does that allow us to do? And I'm not saying multitask. Does it allow us to learn how to control our emotions more? Well, maybe that's what the reason of the traffic jam was. So as you thank the higher power or the eternal light or whatever the words you might use are, on a daily basis for everything, we start to see more reasons for the challenges versus just that we're a victim again in this terrible thing called life. And instead of being a victim, we invite peace come into our life. And so that's what we're all about here at Peace Vision. We want more peace in all of our lives. So thank you for being with us today. David Assel, you'll see him, he's a regular here, always full of great advice for us. David, thanks so much. Thanks, John.